Hello, my name is Habiba and today we're here in Central Cell and we spoke to lots of scientists and designers and so many people that made this centre just be what it is and it's a fantastic building. Why did you want to work in this centre? Well, I suppose it goes back to um, when we decided that we want to build a big new um, research building in Whitechapel and we had the idea that we'd make something really um, large and exciting and a place where lots of different scientists and doctors could work together and exchange ideas. And what inspired you to come up with some of the designs of the building? Well, I was only responsible for thinking about the design of the pod, which is centre of the cell, and I worked on that with an architect and we just drew something on a piece of paper and we made the shape the size of a 16-cell embryo. So that's the very early stage of human life when you or any of us are just made of 16 cells because it's rather larger than we were at that time. But that's what the shape is based on. How did you plan to make this? How did I plan to make it? Um, well, we were given the building, which is the pod itself, um, and we were just given that as a space and a series of storylines. So we created the whole atmosphere and the environment, the lighting, all the um, interactives, all the media that you see. We created that within the space. Um, what types of different jobs were needed to create this building? Well, the exhibition itself, we had to have writers, lighting designers, um, interactive designers, mechanical and electrical engineers that deal with all the electrics and all the air conditioning. We had to have a structural engineer to make sure that it would stand up um, and we had to have builders who built the whole thing. Why was the centre of the cell field? What we wanted to do, um, it comes back to the, the idea that the building is very transparent and that we can talk to people outside of the building by making it transparent. And one of the important things to do that is to encourage um, school children to visit and to understand the kinds of things that we do here so that um, they'll understand about cells and how they work and they'll understand what happens when cells go wrong. But also we hope uh, that they'll get interested in having careers in science and in medicine and in dentistry and in nursing and all of those areas. Um, it has been quite inspiring because I was looking at the scientists doing their work and I was just asking, like, you know, I was questioning myself and it really inspired me to, do, to become a scientist. How do you think the sentence has helped you? I think it really helps me because in science lessons, like, it's a good way of getting out in the lab because uh, sometimes you know we go in there every week and it gets a little bit boring being in the same place all the time. So it's a nice way of, you know, we can go to to the centre of the cell. It's really inspiring. There's some really cool stuff here, and there's loads of cool games that you guys can play as students and, and that help you learn. So that's why I think it's a, a really good place. I'm working on finding an antibiotic that kills the bacteria in all its states. This would mean that the TB bacteria would be killed much more quickly and the TB patients might only need to take their antibiotics for a month. Cells are the, uh, the smallest unit of, of life and understanding how cells work and in particular what goes wrong with cells when you have disease or when you have trauma or when you have an infection um, is really important to understand how you're going to solve those problems. Have you encountered any difficult problems during your experience at the centre of the cell? How long have you got? <laughs> many, 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 many. But what the project's taught me is if you really believe in something, then you can achieve it. 